Hello and welcome back to the Corgi Town USA podcast where corgis run the town. This is going to be our season three debut. So if you were able to join us on our last broadcast, we were helping with the Corgi Nationals and getting the word out, telling you how you could join. So we were hoping that you were able to join. But as we are kicking off season three, we thought we would just have a little back and forth on the Digby anniversary. That's right. So if you are new here, welcome. If you are uh, been following us, uh, we appreciate you so much and we welcome do. back. Welcome back. So as always, I'm Candy Kemp, founder of Corgi Town USA. Eventually we'll be a resort for pets and their people. For now, we are a podcast for pets and their people. In my lap is Chuckles Morrison. He is our spokes corg. And in studio, we have Booger and Mortimer and Hammers around here somewhere. But we also have Digby. Digby, yes. And Digby is uh, was your foster. Yes. He had a, um, a, a, a lovely mommy and daddy. Um, and Couldn't uh, keep him. They couldn't had some couldn't health keep problem. him. There was da- daddy yeah. had some health issues yeah. and, um, and asked Candy to foster him and find him a forever home. And uh, when I lost my husband, Digby became my little boy. Yeah, he really took to you. It's very he healing did. to you. He he took to me right away. He was, um, you know, they, there's that whole concept of um, uh, of an emotional support animal, and he really was. And and he, and it worked for me when I needed him. So I would take him into stores. I would take him in the car with me constantly. Now I don't. Now I don't do that. Um, because you know it's a process Mm -hmm. Uh, mourning is a process healing is a process everything is a process and it's a process where he doesn't need to be with me 24 7 and yet you know i mean i work from home so he is with me a lot um when uh when eric uh, goes to walk the dogs we have two now uh eric's dog and my dog uh which is now our dogs but when eric goes to walk the dogs digby looks at me like can i can i go I mean, I mean, I, I have to tinkle, but if you tell me I don't, I don't go, then I don't go. So yeah. that's what kind of dog he is. He's a great bond with you. Yes, he does. So we wanted to talk because this is a, about a two year anniversary now that, which I can't believe that's been two years, I but know. two year anniversary now that Digby has been living with Kat and people often uh, will ask me if I haven't spoken to them. Well, do you still have Digby? So well, he's in the extended family now. Um, because he just took to you so well and he bonded did. with you so well, and he was so healing to you. Yes. And so we wanted so to talk about you being, um, a, traditionally a cat person, traditionally a cat person. And that's not to say that, you know, um, my cats were not super healing to me, especially Nabu. Unfortunately, um, one of, one of my cats, which was my late husband's cat, if you will, uh, passed away right after he did. Yeah. And right on the spot where he passed away. So tell me that animals don't understand what's going on. Bond. You know, they bond yeah. and they know, they know. But, um, you know, so Nabu was all mine. Nabu has always been all mine. She's, um, she's a black and white. She's a tuxedo. And then there's something different about having a dog. Uh, you know, I can't put in a leash on Nabu and go for a walk with her. I can't go you know, hiking with her. And that's something that I can only do with a dog. But mm-hmm. traditionally I have been a cat person. Um, I've had cats my whole life. I've had dogs in the past, but we were never dog people. And I've said on the show, I'm not a dog person. And I know you've gotten a few comments about that. Because they say, why is cat a part of Corgi town if she's not a dog person, but really you are now, you are an assimilated I, I've dog always person. been a dog person. So here's, here's my definition of it. And maybe that'll clear some stuff up. I love dogs. Oh, there goes the earthquake. <laughs> I love dogs. I've always loved dogs. Um, you know, I've always wanted a dog and then it's okay. Our lifestyle, our work, our, this, our, that doesn't, um, you know, is it, isn't conducive to having a dog. It, it was never, you know, super conducive to having a dog. Cats are more self-sufficient. Yeah. They're much more self-sufficient. You put out a litter box, you put out some food, boom, there they go. Yeah. Um, dogs, dogs need walks, dogs need, and, and cats need attention and love and everything else. But growing up, we had dogs 
we've always had dogs. We've always loved our dogs. We've always been very good to our dogs. And if we had a dog cross the rainbow bridge, we weren't that family that said, oh, okay, we want another dog because a dog not being in our lives is so traumatic and so terrible. Yeah. Um, a cat not being in our lives is always like so traumatic and so terrible. Yeah. A dog, um, you know, we loved it and we adored them. And when people would come over with dogs and when people would have dogs, I've got a great dog story I want to tell you. It just, it, it wasn't like I have to have a dog. So, um, and I have friends, my, my dear friend, Mary, they've always had German shepherds. My cousin, my cousin Lee, she always had German shepherds and she loves German shepherds. And she always has at least one. These to me are dog people. Yeah. I always have a cat. Yeah. I don't always have a dog. So that's what I mean by I'm not a dog person. I love dogs. I adore dogs. I adore them all. I just never had the need of like, I have to have a dog in my life right now. I've always had to have a cat in my life. And that's why I, I kind of associate, but I love dogs. I, do, I love my Digby boy. He's well, my boy. And I, I have to say with being, you know, we, I had Kira. Yes. That was my aunt's dog. And I love telling the story of when she brought her home. I had never seen a Corgi before. Yeah. And they go through a very odd um, adolescent stage. Mm -hmm. And at the time she got Kira, I said, what in the world kind of dog is that? She said, a Corgi. I said, a what? I said, a Corgi. Corgi. And I said, I've never heard of them before. She, neither have I. But she ended up being just this amazing dog, of course. And so when I got old enough to have my own dog, um, that's when I got Lilo. Yes. And he was the most precious boy there ever was. That's right. And I was blessed to have him for 15 wonderful years. It's never long enough, but I'm so glad that I got to have him for that time. But I realized among Corgi folk that I was around these other people as I made Corgi friends that loved their dog the way that I did. Yes. Because I would, you know, I would say, gosh, of course you love your dog. Everybody loves their dog. But I was like, no, you don't understand. I, he's my everything. Yep. He is, he's yeah. still my everything. Yeah. Trust me, Digby is my absolute priority in life, as is oh. Star Lord the cat and Nabu the cat and Wigan the, and Wigan the uh, blue healer. So these are my absolute priorities. Chickens. And chickies. my chickens. And my chickens. That's some chickies. Seven chickens. Um, <laughs> seven chickens just, now? Yeah, seven. Holy that, Toledo. That's why I got half a dozen eggs today. Yay. Um, and so, because two aren't laying uh, oh. yet. Um, so anyway, that's, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of express that I have always, I've always stopped and I, this is, love this story. I've always stopped. I've always pet dogs. I've always played with dogs. I've, you know, always ask the owner, always ask the owner. Yeah. For sure. Um, for sure. Uh, and you know, you never know how they react. Um, Wigan, uh, can, you know, our, our dog Wigan can be, uh, he's a, a blue healer and a little bit of age related reactivity there. Yeah. A little bit yeah. of age re related activity. And yet back in February, we went, uh, we did it, we did a day trip with the dogs, which you can't do with cats. So I kind of love dogs for that. And people were saying, Oh, can, you know, and Wigan, not Digby, you know, it's usually the paparazzi with the Corgi, but Wigan, uh, people were very, he had a fan club. He had a fan club. And uh, Eric and I were like a little hesitant and we can just sat down. He's like, pet me, pet me, please pet me. Oh, hi. Oh, yeah. I love you. So you never know, um, but always ask if you can pet the dog. And to that end, uh, in Manhattan, uh, I was in college. So it was a very, very long time ago in a galaxy very far away. Uh, and I was with my, you know, boyfriend at the time and we're walking around. We had just, we were going to dinner, just came from dinner. And uh, Upper East Side of Manhattan. And we're, you know, we're walking and coming toward us is um, a gentleman a little bit older than us uh, with this beautiful, and I don't, it's the long haired dogs, the, the kind of big, uh, and they have the very, very long hair. Lasso Opsos? Lasso Opso. Uh, I'm, I'm not good with names or dog breeds or cat breeds for that matter. <laughs> um, so it was a Lasso Opso. And the gentleman coming toward us was kind of striking because he was tall and thin and wearing leather pants uh, and probably a black shirt or T-shirt or something like that and really long hair, uh, dressed all in black. Um, but it was the lasso. It was the dog that got our attention. Sure. And so we said, you know, hey, can we can we pet him? Sure. And we would look up every once in a while and ask a question about the dog and pet the dog. And get You know, we got licks and loves and everything and all this 
excitement and like took a couple of minutes of a conversation, a doggy conversation back and forth. And then we went, Hey, have a great day. You know, he's like, he, he went off on his merry way. Have a great day. Thank you so much for letting us play with the dog. And, um, he and I took, uh, took two or three steps and then we stopped and we looked at each other like, Oh, and we turned back around. We had been hanging out with Ace Freely <laughs> of Kiss. We're having this normal conversation with Ace Freely of Kiss. Now, I am talking now the 80s, so I'm dating myself. We're kind of at the height of Kiss here. Yeah. You know, we're it, it's not so for you younger folk who are, you know, listening, please Google Kiss, the, the <laughs> rock band. Uh, and for those who are a little bit older or more into music, you that a big deal dog people yeah i love dogs i absolutely adore adore dogs if so you never know who you might meet as you're being a dog enthusiast as you're being a dog enthusiast um so if you think you're not a cat person if you think you're not a dog person as long as you you know you're not hating on them um or allergic no. um and that's what i i have to digress i love cats because when someone walks in that says that they're not a cat person or they're allergic to cats, dogs will, you know, if they say, oh, I'm allergic to dogs, I'm not a dog person. You could say to the dog, okay, go sit over there and, you know, go be yourself. And the dog will be like, okay, you know, I get it. I get it, mom. Cats will be like, no, mm -hmm. no, there's no such thing as not a cat right, person. Right. There's no such thing as being allergic to me. You must love me. Right. Of course. You must adore me. It's their show. It's their show. So, um. <laughs> I think we're all animal people. I, I, I know that animals are so amazing in our lives. Uh, I love doing this show with you. I think it's so much fun. Um, and, and, and we meet the funnest people. We meet the, the funnest people in the world. Uh, we learn the best things in the world. We learn the scariest things in the world. Mm, that's true. Um, and I, I, Thank you for being back on season three with us. Yeah. Um, thanks for hanging in. Thanks for hanging in. If you, uh, are, are listening to our show to get a little bit more uh, information on corgis, on the breed, on becoming a a, a, corgi, a corgi parent, mm -hmm. um, please reach out to us. Yeah. What it's like. Uh, and if you're like me, where I hadn't had a dog in 30 plus years. Um, I and now to... your life is enriched in ways you'd never imagined. Exactly. Exactly. And I was thinking about it the other day, the dog that I did have, I think it was a, a blue healer because I was thinking oh. about his size and his look and everything. And I think he was at least a mix of a blue healer, which I have now. Um, uh, the uh, My in-laws, their former next door neighbors had two corgis. So I'm very familiar with the breed. We, you know, we'd go visit them and boom, there are the corgis. Very familiar with the breed. Um, reach out to us. If yeah. you're not sure, if you're like me that somebody who hasn't had a dog in a very, very long time or never had a dog, I'm happy to, you know, share my experience with you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Cause you can speak to that. I can speak to that. Yeah. And, and the whole dogs and cats getting along, which are. And we have a lot of our audience as well has, has both, has both uh, right. cats and dogs, corgis yes. and honorary corgis. And, and maybe a few chickens. And maybe a few chickens indeed. Yes, exactly. that's true. And we, I have some, I know some have goats and yeah. cows and horses. And we just. Uh, All on farms. We'll be speaking this season to an author that has uh, her muse is her corgi and her corgi's horse. And her corgi's horse. And yes. her friends. So a lot of, a lot of interesting animal friends. Um, the menagerie, which we're all very grateful for and mm -hmm. i did share season two i did an audio audio only episode on so you want a corgi yes and i can truncate that very quickly if you do want a corgi yes please reach out to us uh go to www.corgitownusa.com we have an intake form there you can put comments uh, give us your name email address and any other information you want if you say how do I get started? Where do I look? We'll be glad to guide you. Absolutely. I can, uh, I'm very careful. We have our breeders that we're very uh, excited about that. We know they do a good job. Um, and I will direct you accordingly, but 
very carefully, uh, it is mindful that I don't ever want to be incentivized by a breeding program or a kennel. No, um, that's absolutely not. Yeah, that's not uh, not the way I want to go. I want to give you the information, let you make the best choice for you. But I will tell you who I like and why. And then you can use that information uh, to your best abilities. But the first thing that I shared was please research the breed. Yes. Uh, you know, we talked to Jerry of Three Corgis. She was a wonderful Corgi. She she did a couple of episodes with us. Um, she's got a lot of information, too. Uh, hers like to chill out, she said. But I would always say don't get a Corgi if you want a dog to chill out. They do chill out, but you do have to train them. Yes. And they're going to go off of your your energy. Uh, I think Jerry's are chilled out because she's chilled out. She's they, chilled out. They, they follow her energy. And that's very important, too. But Corgis are a full-time job. I tell everybody it's they need a job. They're a working breed. Absolutely. They are not quiet. No. They're not background dogs. They are not background dogs. They're not quiet. I know Diggy's favorite job is um, in the chickens. We have a run uh, because of where we live and the and the predators. Um, so the chickens only have a run. They're free range ish. Uh, and sometimes birds get into the run. Mm -hmm. His job is to actually bark the birds down <laughs> the run and out into the coop so I can grab them and let them go free. He herds them for you. He herds them yeah. for me. So and he, and he loves his job. It's a great job for him. It is. It keeps is. him busy, engaged. It gives him some physical and mental energy. Both of those things yes. being engaged is important. And uh, Mortimer that I have, he's my baby. He's only uh, just a little over one. He's a sweetheart, yes. but he's also probably the most corgi corgi I've ever had. Yes. He's very bossy. He's very opinionated. He's very sensitive. He's very... You know, he wants to run the show and you can't be overly sensitive in a pushover with corgis. They will run all over you and you will wind up in behavioral training. Yes. So definitely be able to take commanding. It's all positive reinforcement, no negative, no punitive, but you do need to be commanding. You need to be pack leader. Yep. Um, first and foremost, let them know you have to set healthy boundaries for them. That's very important. But I also say, you know, if you're looking for a breeder, uh, I'm I'm not anti-breeder. I'm anti-backyard breeder and anti-puppy mill. Yes. So you want to be able to see the dogs. Uh, please don't go online sight unseen. There are a lot of scams out there. Uh, but also, I think it's important if you can, when the puppies are old enough, go and see the litter, see their conditions, see where they live. You you want these to come from breeders who they're essentially their pets that they breed, not yeah. not dogs that they stick outside in kennels and then just use them to breed and then they don't get right. any other interaction. Meet, meet mommy and daddy. Just just like us humans, we're a lot like mommy and daddy. Ask questions. Ask Talk questions. to the breeders. Uh, you want to have them. The big three tests that I always preach, definitely get the DM. Yes. Uh, make sure that your litter is not at risk. Uh, that That is 100% preventable. True, we don't have all the research. We've done many episodes on degenerative myelopathy. Uh, we have Tani from Shade Out DM quite a bit. We've talked to Miriam Valer, who wrote a book about her journey with DM, and she's taken that journey, I believe, three times now. Um, that is a full-time job taking yep. care of those dogs because they're at risk does not 100% mean that they will develop it. But if they do, uh, your whole life will revolve around taking care of that dog. And it's, uh, it's a lot, it's a lot and it's hard and it's heartbreaking and it's a slow, painful way. It's canine ALS. Uh, but we know the one thing we do know is this 100% preventable. So yes. they shouldn't be breeding, uh, carriers. And there's more information on the shadeoutdm.org right. website if you want more on that. But just be sure that your litter is not at risk. Uh, demand that you get that that testing documentation. You also want them to not be at risk for EIC, which is exercise-induced collapse, because that is another genetic malady that corgis can succumb to, yes. as well as um, VWD, which is von Willebrand's disease. That's a bleeding disorder. Uh, those three are the ones I always say, please get documentation from your breeder that they're not at risk for those. And uh, even better if they can do the OFA website's certification on hips and eyes. Corgis do tend to, because of their stature, have hip issues. Uh, they also can have eye issues. Um, Hammer is a rescue and uh, he's got a cart and he's had surgery on one side. We've had a lot of physical uh, rehabilitation and now he's to the age where we're, uh, the surgery on the other side, I agree with the vet, we could do it, but there's a lot of risk involved. And uh, the recovery was so involved that it yeah. is at his age, it may be too physically demanding uh, given the risk. So we kind of made the decision to uh, just make him comfortable exactly. and get him exactly. used to the cart. But uh, now that I know that what hips can do, 
uh, in age, I've seen how painful it is for him oh, yeah. and how challenging it is for him. And that's not something. I mean, think of your, you know, your parents, your grandparents, maybe yourself even. And, and what pain sucks. Get, yeah. Pain sucks. Pain sucks. Uh, yeah. Person. And they can't tell us that they're in pain. Right. So, yeah. so, uh, make sure that they're testing for DM, EIC, VWD. We're glad to help. If you want to go to our website, corgitownusa.com, if you want more information on DM, www.shadeoutdm.org. Uh, yes. That's a wonderful organization that educates and they're all about awareness. Uh, Hips and eye certification are even better if you can find a breeder that does that. Yeah, I think we should pontificate enough and yeah in our broadcast and, and, here. and i'm you know and I'm, I'm so glad to uh you know kick off a new season and yeah. have our new people and have our regulars here Definitely. um a, a, a shout out to my nephew noah uh his dad is a veterinarian mm -hmm. and uh you know he's one of three boys three of the most adorable little boys you've ever seen in your life my niece erin uh just you know produced the most gorgeous children really but noah genetic lottery winners genetic oh yeah with the <laughs> smile with the smile awesome um and noah loves corgis Aww. loves corgis well so shout out to you noah thanks for listening watching that's right and until next time yep. i'm cat candy chuckles digby mortimer booger hammer Wigan from afar. Wigan from afar. We're here for you every Thursday. All things Corgi, Corgi lifestyle, health of the breed, and uh, just being pet owners in general. Thank yeah. you so much. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.